Hello everyone, welcome to Relationship Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host and it is a beautiful Tuesday and I hope everyone is doing well. Um, Y'all, I was supposed to go live yesterday but I had to shake back after homecoming. Ooh, we had a wonderful homecoming here in Baton Rouge. So let's get into this live today because my topic is it ain't over until it is over, okay? And this is applying to people who are waiting on divorces to get finalized. It ain't over until it's over. I have seen people have a change of heart at the 11th hour. It ain't over until it is over. Homecoming night, there was a young lady who sent me a message who is dating a man whose divorce is supposed to be finalized in December of this year. Somewhere along the line, she saw a video where someone went live and his wife was sitting on his lap and they were having a conversation. And She doesn't know what they were talking about. She just know that she sat on his lap for a while. They were having a conversation. When she called and asked him about it, he basically had an excuse for it. And then they argued and he powered his phone off. Okay. So then she ends up inboxing me. And my response was, it ain't over until it's over. Now, if people are really serious about divorce, should boundaries be put in place? Yes. Um, but if anybody is wrong or out of order in this situation, it would be him for starting up another relationship because at the end of the day, his wife is being a wife. Like, if a wife wants to sit on her husband's lap, she can sit on her husband's lap. You know, he got an extra marital thing going on, but she's still a wife. And I had so many women who were upset at the position that I took, whereas basically they were saying that I was wrong for saying that he should be faithful to his side woman. I mean, I was wrong for saying that it ain't over till it's over as if I was supposed to say that he owed his side woman some type of loyalty. And the thing is, he ain't even giving his wife loyalty. So how can we expect loyalty to go to another woman who's on the outside. I want y'all to make it make sense. So at the end of this video, we will be looking at the video with Miss Sophia Harpo and Tweet at the juke joint when Tweet walked up to Harpo and he was dancing with Sophia, which is his wife who was living separately. And, and Harpo told her, can a man dance with his wife? And she said, well, not if he my man. And y'all know how that, that story ends up going. But my point is, it ain't over until it's over. Now, now that I got a bunch of y'all on here because I was waiting on y'all to get on. Yesterday, I had the pleasure of speaking to a group of men, okay? And I really enjoyed talking to men because a lot of times when men talk to me, they kind of let loose a little bit and talk, to thing, talk about things from their perspective, okay? One of the things that was said that we we need that I need to address to my group of ladies is how we as ladies, and they said that they're guilty of it too as men, but they said a lot of times they get relaxed in a relationship because we get relaxed in a relationship. For example, a guy said that he's currently dating a lady, and when they first started dating, and he used to say, you know, come over. How when she come over, she used to, you know, make sure she was together. If she had her hair done, her wig done, she would make sure that, you know, it was curled. She would just basically come over as if they could possibly go somewhere when they left his apartment. In other words, she would come over as if company might have been over there when she got to his apartment. In other words, she always came and put on her A game when she came over. But lately, he has noticed that when she comes over, she is in sweat sweatshirts, Crocs, joggers, slides, um, baseball cap with braids. He was like, 
basically when she coming over, it's like coming over to chill. So my question to him was, well, when she comes over, do you ever take her anywhere? Do you ever decide to, to do anything? Or is this some type of, she knows she coming to Netflix and chill type of situation? And his response was, it doesn't matter what we're doing. If you putting on the best version of yourself for the world, and every time I see an Instagram picture or a Facebook picture or you going somewhere with your friends or you brunching or you going here, that or other, the world get to see the best version of you. Why isn't it as, as your man that I can't see the best version of you? I need y'all to comment. I, I need y'all to talk to me. Should there be some type of standard that we have when our men see us, especially if we're giving the world the best version of ourselves? Should we apply that to the, the men that we're dating? Should they get to experience us? Or should they get to experience us in our downtown, our, our, our downtime, our relaxed time? In other words, I'm at home, I'm comfortable. You get to see me in my natural element. How does that work, ladies? Talk to me. Let me know. Because my husband gets off at 5 o'clock. And I know by between 5.30 and 5.45, depending on how traffic is, I know he pulling in. But even me married 22 years, guess what I do? I still go and put a little lip gloss on. I still go and take a towel and wash over my face. I, I still take and put a little mouthwash in my mouth and swish out my mouth. Because I know when I greet my husband, I'm going to greet my husband with a kiss. And even at 22 years, I don't want to give you no stale kiss after I done been eating and munching on stuff all day long and doing this and doing that. So my question to you, ladies, are we, are, are we entitled to get comfortable? Because I'm a married woman. And even as a married woman, I don't get comfortable. And I know a lot of y'all be like, oh, Sharonda, you be on some old school teaching and that was some shit out the book of the 1950s where the women go and spruce themselves up before their husbands come home. But my thing is, I done been out here all day long giving the world the best version of myself. Meaning when, when I come to do this live video, I even got myself together. When I'm here working this store, I sell sex for a living. So I have an understanding that I got to get myself together. So when I leave here and my husband comes home... Do you think that I'm going to go home and get up out of all of this here and then have a dust on? No. Even if I decide to get up out of all of this, I put on something decent that's comfortable. But I make sure that I'm still together. These eyelashes don't come off until I get ready to lay down at night. They don't come off. This face does not come off until I get ready to lay down at night. Because I just feel like if I'm going to give you 100%, you better believe I'm going to give Spencer Parker 110%. There's no way that you get more of me than my husband gets of me. And a lot of times we tend to get relaxed. And that's just the truth. But the thing is, men feel like they can't share this with us because as women, we get easily offended and we get to talking about, I've been at work all day, and I've been dealing with children all day, and I've been doing this, and I've been doing that there. But you know what the man said? I get tired of fucking, and she got these damn Cleo braids in from Set It Off, and she got a damn cap rack with wigs hanging on it. Put one of them fucking wigs on and fuck me. I was like, woo. Woo. How the world get to see you in your glory, but I got to look and set it off braids. And I got to hit it from the back like I'm fucking a nigga with, with cornrows going down the back of his head. How the world get to see all of this glam, but I get to see you just looking toe up any kind of way. And you know what he said she told him? Because it's just you. But let me tell you something, ladies. Men are visual, okay? Men are visual. And there's certain things that we cannot change about men. And one thing that we cannot change about them is visual. They operate on attraction. Attraction. They visual. Meaning that they got to be able to see you in a certain type of way in order for them to remain getting turned on. Yeah. Like a lot of times y'all be getting fucked and you wonder why the dick going limp in the middle of the, in the, in the, middle of the fuck. 
is because ain't nothing that turn them on. It's the same old, same old every time. It's you, your naked ass, and your cornrows. If you're going to get a wig, get you some good glue. So even if you want to pull it a little bit, it don't come off. Yeah. Because men like that kind of shit. Even if you ain't going to put on no full lingerie, guess what? Put you some pretty panties on. Put a little thong on. You got to do something to keep this man enticed because after a while, it's not fun no more. I, the, they had another man. Because I was talking to a bunch of men yesterday because the, the place that I was handling business at yesterday just so happened to be a place that had a lot of men that worked there. And they recognized who I was. And they was like, oh, we need to talk to you. The man said he was creeping with this woman, married, creeping with this woman. He knew that him and his wife was not going to work out. And basically, it was just a matter of him getting certain things in order to dissolve one relationship because he knew he was starting up another one. He said, but when he was creeping and parking all the way around the corner to walk to her house, when she, when he would get there, she would have uh, candles lit, the house would be smelling good. You know, she'll have like this stuff that, that he liked. She made sure she had the beer in the refrigerator and all of this kind of stuff. Guess what? Now that he her man... He saying ain't no candles being lit, ain't no beer in the refrigerator. And, and what happens is men, men have a way of not liking change. Meaning however we start off with them, it's how we got to keep it up with them. Yeah. And another thing is when we decide that we want to cohabitate in the household with them, there's a point of time, there, there's a period of time where we got to learn them. Meaning that if you started off having his beer in the refrigerator, then when he living with you, he expect that same beer to be in the refrigerator, right? And I'm going to give you an example. I put, I like sugar in my red beans, right? I, my grandmother, when she cooked, she put a little tap of sugar in her beans. That's sweet, but just a little tap of sugar. My husband hates sugar in his red beans. So I had to learn how to cook it for him, Right? When you're dealing with men and they like they, they clothes hung up a certain type of way. Like even in our closet, I have the long sleeve shirts, the t-shirts, the pants. All separate is the way I hang stuff up. This is how it has always been. So if another woman comes along and she start hanging Spencer clothes up and it's just shirt, pants, long sleeve, short sleeve, however she put it in there all at one time and he got to go and searching for this, that, the other, that's going to be a problem. That is going to be a problem because he is accustomed to long sleeve shirts together, short sleeve shirts together, pants together, shorts together, suits on one side. So that means it comes a period of time where you got to learn your man. And when he's telling you that he likes things done a certain type of way, you can't be combative and be like, at least I'm hanging it up. At least I'm washing it. At least I'm doing it for you. Because the same man can say, I would rather you not do it if you're not going to do it the way I need it done. I'd rather you just not do it. So what I'm trying to get you to understand, ladies, is there comes a point in time where we have to understand that we can't get comfortable. Even when it comes down to our weight, because another man discussed that. When I met her, she was working out. She was drinking tea. She was wearing a waist trainer. She was doing this. She was doing that. She was basically caring about her appearance. Now that we're together, I just noticed that she, she not caring about her appearance no more. She ain't trying to keep that waist snatched no more. Even I'm guilty of it. And the reason how I know you can't get comfortable with weight is because I, at one point in my life, was 350 pounds because I had gotten comfortable. Because my husband would never pull me to the side and say, baby, look, yeah, I love you, but this is a lot of weight on you. But I'm to the point in my life right now, ain't nobody got to pull me to the side and tell me, that you know what, you you putting a little bit too much on. Because I can look at myself and tell that guess what, Sharonda, you need to cut back on carbs and, and, and eat more vegetables and protein. Because your face starting to look a little full. See, I, I look at myself in the mirror right now and I'm like, okay, Sharonda, your face is looking a little bit plush. Guess what? You got to start cutting back on carbs and, and upping your proteins and your vegetables. 
because you can't let yourself get back to that weight again. You can't get comfortable like that again. But these are the conversations that when people, they, they, they won't have them with us because they don't want to offend us. And even if a man does try to have it and we get so offended, then we got our family and friends and everybody talking about, well, if he don't like it, somebody will like it. But at what point do we hold ourselves accountable? Okay. So at some point we as women have to hold ourselves accountable because men are visual. So I don't mind having these hard conversations with a group of women. Even when I'm talking to my daughters, you know what I let them know? Okay, y'all need to cut back. Y'all getting too big. You got to have room to grow. You haven't even reached adulthood. Y'all are the size that I was after I had my first child. You got to cut back. You got to discipline yourself. But we feel like we don't have to have these type of conversations. But we do. Because you my girl. We cool. We got to hold each other accountable. Yeah. So now let me lead into the next part of my life. Go best friend. Go best friend. That's my best friend. Yes. Kangaroo. For you and your best friend. Go best friend. Go best friend. So you getting two for the price of one. Two for the price of one here at the PPG store. Go best friend. Go best friend. Yep. These will go back to regular price after Halloween. But for right now, so you and your best friend can be on the same level when y'all go to the Halloween party. Go best friend. Two for the price of one. Yes, we still have sexy costumes in stock that are a little revealing. But, you know, still covered up. Sexy, sexy. Yes, yes, yes. Sexy, sexy. If you if you looked at my uh, post yesterday, you saw the history of the French maid. See, the French maid, I'll give you a little quick history lesson. Basically, she was like um, a wealthiest woman, right-hand girl. She made sure her hair was together. She was like a full-on cosmetologist. And she dressed in black and white. And she would make sure that the lady clothes, she kept up with fashion. She was her stylist. She, she did her hair. She did her makeup. Basically, she made sure she was ready to go out into the world and ready for her man. And she would be dressed in black and white. Okay? So, that's the little history of the French maid. Now, what would happen is these women would normally be really, really young. Okay? Catering to women that was a little older and more established. And a lot of times, men would take a liking to this little young girl dressed in the black and white. And industry decided to sexualize the French maid. And basically make her an erotic figure because, you know, she was normally a young, little, sexy, fancy little girl dressed in black and white, taking care of the older woman. And, of course, men like young, cute, fine, little, young, tender things. So, that's how the French maid became sexualized, okay? So, again, we are fully stocked here with costumes here at the PPG store. I have a lot in plus size. I don't have a lot in regular size because regular size women don't really shop. But if you are plus size like me and you want to be uh, on point for the Halloween party and you want to be able to double it and use it outside of Halloween, meaning you want to do some kind of role playing, cosplay or whatever, come see me, baby. Come see me here at the PPG store. And I think that is going to be about it today. Okay. Make sure y'all, you know, stay on top of yourself, baby. It, it, you know, a lot of people don't understand the importance of self-care. Self-care is self-love. Okay. When I present, when I look at myself and I'm the best version of myself, I love to see me as the best version of myself. Okay. So, you know, get, get in some of these makeup classes, get on YouTube. And I'm not even saying everybody got to wear makeup because you don't may not want to wear makeup and that's fine. But learn how to pluck your eyebrows and, and, and make yourself look neat. It ain't nothing wrong with having natural hair. But if you're going to have natural hair, bitch, you got to arch your eyebrows. You can't have natural hair all over your head and then face just all over the place too. You got to shake that shit up. Like, yeah, you got to look feminine. You got to look like a woman. So wear your natural hair. You ain't got to relax. You ain't got to perm it. You ain't even got to comb it. But guess what? At least arch your eyebrows. Mm-hmm. At least put a little gloss on, put a little Vaseline on, put a little something on. Yeah, get yourself together. Put your little smell good on. It ain't nothing wrong with being natural, but you can at least smell like a woman. Watch your eyebrows. If you got long sideburns that grow all the way down and look like a beard, get that shit waxed. Yeah. Make yourself look like a lady. 
Carry yourself like a woman. Yeah. I have to say that. I have to say that. Because sometimes, you know, we be going a little bit too far. We 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 won't catch it. I looked at I, I went down, I told y'all I went downtown and um girl I went down to that courthouse and the women up in there, Lord Jesus, I was like, I'm looking at the ID pictures when they got the job, and I'm looking at the way everybody looking today after they done got the job. And I say, Lord, I don't know if life whooping their ass or this job whooping their ass. But I would be pissed off every day if I looked at this ID picture and I look this beautiful on this ID picture and now I'm coming to work like I just don't give a fuck about nothing no more. We got to start giving a fuck and we got to start being polite because I was in Tonus and all I did was say, can I please get four lobsters? And I would like to get them steamed. Thank you. And you know, the man said, are you from here? And I said, yes, I'm from here. He said, because we so used to people coming in and just being demanding and not saying please and thank you. So when y'all dealing with people out here in this world, in the service industry, they got to do stuff for you, say please and thank you. Be polite. Because ain't no way somebody should be asking if I'm from here because they're so used to being handled like shit because they behind the counter fixing your seafood. Yeah. I said, I'm from here. Yes, I'm from here. Because I said, can I please get four lobsters? And I would like to get them steamed and soaked. Thank you. Like, we got to be polite. We got to be ladies at all times. Yes, we are ladies. And we have to conduct, conduct ourselves as such. All right? Y'all come see me here at the PPG store. I am here. Yes, I am here. Y'all be blessed.